<laughs> Just hang on, wait long enough, you'll see the salvation of the Lord with you. Just wait long enough. Just stay in the theater till you get your happy ending. Well, y'all need to bring her up here. We got a new member in this church. Come on. Uh oh. I know the first thing I'm going to get her is a comb. <laughs> Turn around and let everybody see this baby. Give me a microphone. All right, Dad, talk to us. Well, this is Anna Lee. <laughs> Anna Lee. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'll tell you, I thought I was, I thought I was strong. Honestly, I thought I didn't like babies. When that baby was born, the the first cry I heard, I fell apart. I cried for an hour straight. Really, I. I <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was, I, until they're a toddler, I didn't want to hold them or nothing. But this little girl, man, she's beautiful. She's not fussy. She's really not. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, she's got some big old feet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Those are, my, those are my feet, yeah, with, with, some, with some luck. She had some long fingers when she was first born. That was one of the first things I saw. You're a bass player? <laughs> Can it be said that a, a new daughter will make a man out of you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Find out real quick that you can answer your call. You don't know what's in you until the demand is made on it. Once the demand is made on the gift inside you, that's when the, the man flourishes and becomes a daddy. Mama becomes a mama. Yes. She's good at it too. <clears throat> and we know that God is a family man. He I wanted a family, so he, he created family. And that's why he'll help you. If you put together a family, he'll help you. He'll get behind you, yes, back you, will. support you. Yes, and you'll have miracles take place and finances <clears throat> I'm particularly impressed, and we'll, we'll dedicate her when we have a dedication service, but I'm impressed this morning. We lay hands on you guys. And uh, there's a better house coming. Good. One with... Um, I see something on a crawl space. Warm in the winter and cool in the summer. And nice. Picturesque. Curb appeal. Pretty, pretty like the inhabitants thereof. <laughs> uh -huh. I see a little concrete pad when she's out playing. Mm -hmm. And I see a grill. And I see people over. And I see fellowship. I see good future. I see a truck in your future. Point at him, tell him, get by trucks. He'll say, fine, just bring me some money, right? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> money, come to him. money comes to you. Get him a truck. She needs a better car. Furniture's coming. Carpet that stands straight up and smells beautiful. Beautiful paint on the walls. Cabinets for this cook. Stainless steel refrigerator. Mmm. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name, I bless this family, Lord. Bless them. 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 In Jesus' name, blessings of victory, blessings of words spoken, blessings of money and finances, blessings of place to live and things to drive and safety and keeping power in Jesus' name. Well, welcome to church, young ladies. Your first service. Mm -hmm. I just love that foot. I tell you what. She's loved her Papa John since before she was born. Already. Oh, yeah. Move around when she hear me speak. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Look at that. See how her little heels looks like the end of my finger? <laughs> look at that right there. It's just so pretty. Mm -hmm. I look at her smiling. Look oh, she's mine, Papa John. <laughs> smiling. Just love that baby. Speak a blessing over that child. She'll come to know the Lord real early. Yes. 
love her daddy, love her mama, and, and love all of us in Jesus' name. Y'all give these guys a hand. Wow. <clears throat> Such is the kingdom. Say, he put us in a family. I'm in family. You're my family. And I'm fixing to hug me a family member. Come here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, daughter. Man, I'd, I would love to do that. Uh, and actually, during the week, it would be best, like, during the day, you know, like around lunchtime, because I work three to eight giving lessons, so if you're available during the week, like lunchtime like that, I'm available for you. I would be fine. Five days. Yeah. Absolutely. That'd be great.
Let's sit right here. When everybody gets through talking, we'll let them talk, and then I'll, I'll bring you up. Okay, I'll tell you, tell you to talk. Okay, let everybody finish talking. Okay, go sit with Miss Jane. Hey Bear, how are y'all? Good to see you. <clears throat> Come here, Michael. Come sit right here. Stand right here with me. Come here. Stand up right here. Stand up. Get up on top. Stand up on your feet. Jump up here. Let everybody see you. Jump up here. Come here. Come here just a minute. Come here. Just get behind the pulpit. Are you kidding? <clears throat> Do this for serious. <clears throat> he came to me and he said, I have something I want to say to the parents. Hey? Could very well be the word of the Lord. We'll see. I doubt seriously he's going to say anything wrong. I don't know what he's going to say. But I like it, don't you? Did you have something you wanted to tell the parents? What did you want to tell them? My dream. What's your dream? It's about my dog. It's, his name is my buddy. And I was at grandmother's. And I was playing in the grass. And there was um, a black dog in the and the white dog, the, the black one was, was my buddy. And the, the white one was the other one. And I got a good dream. Was that a good dream? And um, and when I was um, calling my buddy, he came uh, to me. And and my my buddy is is alive. And and he was when when it was um long long time ago, and he died. Yeah. But in your dream, he was alive? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Anything else you want to tell us about your dream? No. Is that it? I think you ought to give him a hand. <clears throat> Do you think the Lord is showing him something in that dream? Yes. He brought me artwork. There's a cross. And two people at the bottom of it. Who's at the bottom of it, Michael? Is it? Who's the one with the ears? Y'all hear what's going on with this child? He's already sorting out good and evil in front of the cross. Right. It's correct. The white and the black dog is significant too. God showed him. He had the word from the Lord and he wanted to bring it here because he knew he was hearing from God. Now just stretch your hand out towards him and pray over him. That's the Lord bless him. Speak to him. 
Let it be said that from a child he's known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make him wise unto salvation. And the faith that dwelt in his mother and his grandmother and that the Scriptures speak to him at a young age. And he'll speak as the oracles of God and suffer the children to come to me, for of such is the kingdom. And if anybody was to hurt one of these little ones that belonged to me, it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and he would drown in the bottom of the ocean. I believe he'll speak all his life spiritually in Jesus' name. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got, I've got a file at home called Grandchild Artistry. When they draw anything, it goes in the file. I got one on my desk, it's crossed, and it says, God is with you. And then it, the words cross with an arrow pointing at the cross. <laughs> cross. <clears throat> Little circle down here with the name of Kylie. She let me know, let me know God is with me. I believe that child heard that. God, the Lord's telling her, God's with him. And she drew the picture. God is with you. Mm -hmm. I got a little five by seven card one time with a little girl with long hair with a smile and dots going up to a little head with no hair. And Allison came to me and said, this is me thinking of you. <laughs> I looked at that. I'm so keeping that all my life. <clears throat> oh yeah, the power went off it, when, it snowed, when it snowed back in January and uh, so they all came over and we had a fireplace and we never lost our power. It flickered one time but we kept it and dear Mimi and Papa, thanks for letting us stay for the day. We'll come back sometime. <laughs> and for the food, if we were not here, we would be cold and no food for us to eat. Your son and his family love Lance, Vicki, Kylie, and Allison. Thanks, Mimi. Love Kylie Alexander. She got to thinking. See, the Lord's telling her. If it had not been for this, we'd be home and we'd be cold. We're provided for. Isn't that wonderful? He said Thanksgiving, the Lord blessed. It sure is. The thankful heart always receives more and more blessing. I got another leading in me this morning during worship. Lane, you and Patty come up here right quick. Come here, come here right quick. <clears throat> you have some of the prettiest hair I've ever seen in my life. Turn around, let everybody look at you. I know, I need some of it. Let me go turn around. <laughs> this one, as you know, is a widower and was married how long? 40? Yesterday would have been 50 years. Yesterday was 50. Okay, so she hastened on, on to uh, her inheritance, <clears throat> and she's fine. But the scripture says it's not good for a man to be alone. And only God can do all things well. Well, so far it looks pretty good. Y'all look like y'all been together for years. <laughs> I've just brought them up because I have this leading in me. They're going to need prayer. Because even though they're older, midlife, it's like starting all over. And you got to, two people are so different. If he treats her like he treated Wanda, he's going to mess up because this ain't Wanda. The Bible says, dwell with them according to knowledge. What Wanda laughed at, she might not think is funny. What aggravated Wanda, she'll think is hilarious. You just don't know. I mean, you have to retrain them. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, so what's, when's the big date? One month from tomorrow, month from, yesterday. from yesterday. Yeah, one. March 24, two o'clock, right here. You are cordially invited, and it is good for a, a man. He that finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains favor of the Lord. And uh, what has impressed? Several of us, and I've had people say this to me, Pastor John, does it impress you like it does me that Lane did not require some young woman? He had to, he just didn't have to have some kid. He wanted somebody his age. What am I saying? 
I'm just telling it like they're telling me. He, he got one that just looks just like him. They seem like they're, don't they seem perfect to you? And I'm, go, I'm going by the outward appearance, but I'm also going by the, the content of this one's heart because I know what's in him. I'm getting to know her. And I'm real protective over my sheep. So this is why I'm calling for prayer. We got about a month to pray. Point at them. So I'm praying for y'all right there. Now stretch your hand out towards them and pray. For the next month, while they're still melding together, different thoughts, different backgrounds, different thinking, different households, putting two houses together and, and two curio cabinets. We gotta decide which one to keep and which one to get rid of. We got, we got two sets of everything. We got, are we gonna keep this set or your set or my set? Or is it gonna be our set? What, all the, the devil's in the details, they say. But I believe that there'll be harmony and sweetness and goodness between the two of them. And they'll know and they'll just, they'll, their heart will be, well, I don't care, what do you want? He'll say, I don't care, what do you want? I just want what you want. No, that's what I want. I want what you want. That's what they need to start saying to each other. And it'll be, they probably already do. I'm just saying what's coming out of my mouth. What comes out of my heart. So for the next month, our focus is right here and right here. And right here. And I have loved him for 10 years and I'm going to learn you and I'm going to love you because I love you already. I think you're perfect timing for this man of God. Anything you'd like to say? He knows he's the boss. Oh, he does? He knows who's the boss. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. 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 Smart, smart woman will make a man think he's the boss. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, just start speaking blessings at him. Start telling him. Tell him. Bless him financially. Bless him. Speak to him. That, they're, they're, that each of them's kids will love the other one. That's the big thing. That's a big thing. Each of, them's, each of them, their children will love each other. And accept this newness. Accept and adopt in their heart. <laughs> That's what I had in me this morning. That's what I had in me. All right, pretty face. Mm. Sweet, 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 big brother. Yes, sir. That's a giant right there, y'all. Right there. That is a giant. Do anything. Can do anything. Loves Pastor John. Loves you. Servant. See, I know. I know what she's getting. She's getting a man of God. Hallelujah. Mr. Alexander, where are you? You want to come up? You want to come up? Jay had to slip out. How would you feel if your oldest son had to leave service real quick because he had to uh, go meet a house inspector because he had to buy, he bought another house? Just gonna pay cash for another house? I bought that piece of land, I must need to go and see it. How would you feel if your son lives in a beautiful home but he just went and paid cash for another one just because he wanted to? I didn't, I've never heard it on this wise, have you? So we're gonna let Jay go get that inspection done, he and Andrea, and then, uh, so he's, uh, he's right here, he's gonna take, the, uh, take his brother's uh, assignment this morning. How about right. it? <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Amen, you're beautiful this morning. You're beautiful this morning. You're the righteousness of God by the faith of Christ Jesus. You know, the scripture says that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You chose the right thing this morning. You chose to come to church. You chose the right thing. You chose His goodness. All these things will be added unto you. All the promises you work for, everything good in your life will be added unto you. You chose the right thing. Your word people. You know, word people aren't destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? Word people know the truth and they're set free. 
Say, say I'm a word person. I know the truth. I'm set free. Amen. Amen. Let me do these announcements now. Wordwise Bible College is every Sunday and Monday at 6 p.m. The Forward Conference is Thursday, June 28th through Saturday, June 30th. It's hosted by Jensen Franklin's ministry. There's a sign-up sheet and information in the foyer. Please sign up ASAP. We'll be continuing with a hot dog and hamburger meal every Wednesday night, at 6 o'clock until 6.45. Please make plans to join us and email us. Pastor's Bible study and classes for the youth uh, are on Wednesday night. Children in nursery start at 7. We need, he- we need people to volunteer to help prepare meals on Wednesday night. Please see Pastor Janie. We also want to make you aware that every service is recorded and CDs are for sale after the service in the visitor room. Adult Sunday school class is every Sunday at 9 a.m. Gay Burge is teaching. The class gives us foundational and biblical principles. Subjects are... Where's Gay? What are you teaching right now, Gay? Amen. Amen. Go to that class and you'll be a word person. Amen. What's the one announcement? I forgot to write this down, but um, March, because Sunday, March the 18th, which is pastor's birthday, but besides that, um, Steve and Cheryl Ingram are going to be here ministering in the service. And for y'all that don't know, uh, Brother Steve was Brother Copeland's piano player, music arranger for, what, 12 years? Just about any of the albums you hear Brother Copeland sing, Steve is playing and Steve arranged most of all those songs. And Cheryl was a backup singer. And they pastor the um, Word of Faith Church in Orlando, Florida. That's where we sent Philip and Kelsey. And they just blessed them and gave them an apartment full of furniture. Y'all, they're good people. And uh, they were going to be in the area and let us know. And we're so excited. Please let Kelsey, I meant to tell you all weekend we've been together. Let Philip and Kelsey know they're going to be here. But that's in a few weeks, March the 18th, ministering. Remember I tell you, I always get a gift from God in my birthday. So that's his gift this year. Okay. Bishop Williams is going to be here. Now, I don't know if he'll be in service. He's ministering in Florida and oh, coming by to oh, see Oh, he's going to be here. He's going to be here. Oh, excuse me. Oh. He will be here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Look forward to that. All right, let's receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Yes, Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah, raise your hand if you need an envelope. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. We put you in remembrance of your word this morning. Lord, your people chose the right thing. They chose life. They chose to give the first of their time this week, and they're choosing to give the first of their increase this week, Lord. You said you'd bless it. You said you'd increase it. You said you're Jehovah Jireh. You said you're our provider. When war comes, you said you're the Lord our banner. When fear comes, you said you're the Lord our peace. 
When doubt comes, you said, you're the Lord our righteousness. When we don't understand all those words, you made it simple. You said your name was Abba Father. You know, the scripture says that the common people heard Jesus gladly. If it's not easy, it's not God. If it's not easily understood, it's not from God. He's not the author of confusion. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, Abba. Abba. You know, there's two words in Hebrew. One's father, one's daddy. Jesus used Abba. That means daddy. It's simple. Daddy encompasses all the other names of God. You don't fear. You don't worry. You don't wonder about provision. You don't wonder about Jehovah Rapha being your healer. Jehovah Nisi being your banner, fighting your wars, you just know he's daddy. You don't have to worry about all those other names and understand it all. Because daddy's love is unmerited. You didn't earn it. But it's better than that. Because you didn't earn it by your merit, you can't unearn it by your failure. Because it's daddy's love. He's Abba Father this morning. Amen. And serve the people. Let's raise our hands one more time. We welcome our pastor. Lord, you said you're the Lord, our banner. When men went to war, they'd call in their bannermen and they'd come fight their wars with them. But you said you're the Lord, our banner. You fight our wars for us. So I declare that anyone's at war today, anyone's at strife or fear, you call in the Lord, your banner. He fights that battle for you. You don't toil anymore. You don't worry anymore. You don't fight what you can't defeat anymore. You have the Lord who's your banner. He fights your battles for you. So I declare a great week for you. I say you know the truth and you're set free. I say you are the righteousness of God by the faith of Christ Jesus. You know, he said, he's Jehovah's sit canoe. He said, I am the Lord, your righteousness. He didn't say I'm the Lord, so be righteous. When you're in fear and you're worried if you're pleasing God, Remember, he said, I am your righteousness. He didn't say perform. He didn't say be good enough for me. He said, I make you good enough for me. I choose that you're good enough for me. And when you're not good enough for me, I forgive you anyway. And that makes you good enough for me. It is not of ourselves. It is from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome our pastor. I don't even appreciate it. No, you got it. Wow. <laughs> oh, this is Jason Ellis. Jason, this is your new birth day 20 years ago. You're so young and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> eager young minds ready to hear what the Bible has to say did you bring a Bible get in the habit if you don't already get you a good Bible that's got a got a large print like a giant print easy to read so you can just at a glance you can see it 
I know different ones of you like different uh, translations. Get a KJV because that's what I preach from, and that's what I'll get in my spirit, and that's what you'll you'll hear out of your spirit. You'll hear when the Lord speaks to you in the in the um, translation that you read from. And uh, see, He'll speak to you in the language you're used to hearing. <clears throat> He's never spoken to me in Latin. <laughs> he never has. The only thing he said to me in a different language one time was when Kylie was born and she was born distressed and her little breathing wasn't right and her lungs weren't right and what all was wrong with her? She was premature. She had a little crease on her head from the thing they had used to get her out and, and her feet and hands were purple. She wasn't getting enough oxygen. Man, they had to tape her up and put her bunch of hoses all down in her, and and it was uh, and it was uh, could go either could have gone either way, first few days, and that was, uh, man, I I realized that's when it hit me again that it's easy to get so invested in worthless commodities, and I was invested things that were so important to me became unimportant totally, all that was important to me was this child, <clears throat> so I called Steve Poteet. <clears throat> He's got a medical background, KCM's um, disaster relief, uh, head of disaster relief at the time. He was actually, at the time, he was um, over three of the five major divisions of the ministry. And uh, I told him what was going on, and we prayed together, and he gave me some, in, in, uh, some instructions over and above the uh, spiritual side. He gave me the natural side of it. And when he said, when he prayed, when we prayed together, the Lord said these words to me. He said, a fait accompli. I didn't know what, the, what it meant. A fait accompli. He said, it's a done deal. <laughs> and the child did fine. And she's still fine. Take a Bible and let's pray. Father, thank you for the written word. <clears throat> We're going to learn what you have to say to us today. We'll hear not only what Pastor John says or the words spoken, we'll hear what you have to say about what will be said. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Since the 1st of December, I've been talking to you about a subject called the uh, pitfalls of prosperity. If you think there are problems in lack, wait till you have a bunch and see how problematic prosperity can become. And the reason I'm teaching this is because he said to me these words at 4 o'clock in the morning. Let me look back over my notes because I wrote it. And again, uh, words like this, you, know, you have to judge them. So you judge whether or not I heard from the Lord. And if it means nothing to you, why well, you just, you know, shelve it. But if it speaks to your heart, you'll hear the word of the Lord. This was December 3rd, 2017, at 2.30 in the morning. He said, Prosperity, the likes of which has never been seen or experienced, is coming to the people. Prepare them so they will avoid the pitfalls into which so many before have fallen. My desire towards them is white hot. I am ready to exalt, to promote, to bless, exceeding abundantly above all they can ask or think. I don't want them to stumble through my blessing. I want them instructed beforehand so I may pour unhindered and without limits. Teach and exhort, for this is likened unto a birth that cannot be restrained and a responsibility that cannot be neglected. Prepare vessels that I may fill to overflowing. Quickly it shall come. For my righteousness shall go before you and my wisdom shall be seen like the noonday sun and my glory shall be seen upon my inheritance. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Did you know the first mention, the Bible interpretive, is it cold in here to y'all? No. No. Feels good to you? Okay. Yes. There's always one's fanning, the other one's covering up. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, just, just keep you fixed, right? <laughs> That's been a 40 year ongoing thing. <laughs> I'm married to Goldilocks. 
Got to get it just right. Don't you know? This this mattress is too hard, John. I can't I can't sleep on it. My back hurts. Get another one. This mattress is too soft, John, and my back's hurting. I can't sleep on it. This mattress, John, is causing us to roll together in the middle. I said, what could possibly be wrong with that mattress, Jane? <laughs> Either way, you have to constantly try to fix, try to get it just right. And all the men in here said, Amen. thank you. <laughs> and so he began to share this with me about over the, over the weeks. It just seemed like it's all I could think about. All I could, all I could, when I would read, it was all about, I'd see prosperity in its... Um, and its pitfalls. And I remember the Bible interpretive rule. There's a rule to Bible interpretation. This is good enough for your notes. You should write this down. When a word is first mentioned in Scripture, it's first mention. Whatever that word is, that same meaning of the word in its first mention will be carried out throughout every subsequent mention in Scripture. Now, it may mean something else, but it will always include the meaning in the first mention. So now, the first mention of the word glory, G-L-O-R-Y, we think of it as the glory cloud, and it is, and the, the sky is glorious, the sun is glorious, and all that, That's, that is true. But the first mention of the word glory was speaking of Jacob's wealth. When they spoke of him, they said, all of these things that he has, and besides all these things he has, he has all of this glory. The glory that he had is all of his wealth. Jacob was fabulously wealthy. All men of God in the Bible, great men of God, were wealthy. All of them, all the kings, all of the, 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 the musicians, the prophets. There was one time a prophet didn't have a dime during the, the dearth, during the, the drought. They didn't have, any, didn't have, any, have anything. And uh, you know the story about how the king from another country sent his servant to him to get healed at the king's palace. And... Um, King pitched a fit, said, is he trying to start a war with me? Trying to get this man healed of his leprosy? Then the word of the Lord came to the prophet. The prophet said, tell him to come to me. He'll know there's a prophet in the land. What he was saying is there ain't no king. So they came to the prophet. And the prophet got him healed. Took him dipping in the Jordan River seven times as he came up healed. Then he wanted to give the offering that his king had given to him, give this, take this offering with you, offer it for your healing. But the prophet, knowing that that offering from the man was given, was earmarked for the king, refused to take it. He said, I'm taking an offering. It's not time to receive offerings. Is it a time, he said, to receive offerings and, and money and vineyards and houses? Well, this particular prophet, when they left... I believe it was Elisha. I just haven't studied it out. This is just coming out of my spirit right now. That's why I'm not saying a lot of names. But his servant, he was, Elisha had a school of the prophets. If, you have, if you're a prophet and you have other people around you, the spirit that's on you will transfer to them. And they'll, you'll actually school them even if you're not in a class setting. They'll watch you by observation, by association, environment, influence. They begin to take on your attributes. They'll think like you think. They'll talk like you talk. A lot of that's natural, but much of it is spiritual. So Elisha had this group of prophets that were with him. And they had been, they had felt and tasted of the sting and the bitter pill, the taste of having lack during this drought, during this dearth. And they did not understand why the man of God leading them turned that offering down. So Gehazi took off after the man and said, uh, and he lied to him. He run him down and the man healed, said, what can I do for you? He said, man, there's a couple of prophets back here that really need some of those clothes. You're talking about some of that money. He gladly gave it to him. So he hid it in his tent. And Elisha confronted him. He said, where'd you go? And then he lied to his prophet, to the man that's leading him. He said, your servant didn't go nowhere. 
He said, my heart went with you when I saw the man turn from the chariot to meet you. He saw him by word of knowledge. You could see the vision. He wasn't there physically. He said, bad news, because now the leprosy that was tied to him is going to be on you. And so Gehazi was a, pro was a leper from that day. After that, the rest of the prophets that had been with Elisha saw what happened and decided it was too expensive to hang out with the man of God because a curse can come on you if you do the life. See, they all thought to do the same thing. All the other prophets did. They, just, they sent Gehazi. He, I think he went on his own, but they all thought of doing the same thing and saw how quick they could have become leprous. And so they said, we're out of here. <clears throat> and so they went to go build another place to live. Had to borrow an axe because they didn't have any money for an axe and didn't have anything belong to them. So with a borrowed axe, they go to chopping down these trees and he's going to build a log cabin, I guess, and build this house for them to live in. And the axe head flew off and la landed in the water. And Elisha went down there to help them build the place to get away from them, from him. He didn't, he didn't say, listen, you didn't understand. He, he didn't say, look, wait, come on, guys, come on back. You've got to stay with the prophet so you can, you can have the anointing. It, it'll turn out good. Just hang out and see what happens. He didn't tell them that. He just said, y'all leave and go. I'll help you build you a place. <laughs> and then when the axe head flew off, they said, alas, master, now he's the boss again. It was borrowed. So Elisha did that, uh, that same, remember that he, he took that, um, that uh, piece of, I guess it was like a, uh, uh, what is that stuff that grows like cane? And uh, sharpened the end up and he said, where did it go? And they said, point about where it went. He threw that thing in the water and it made that axe head swim so they could get it back. So now here's Elijah back where he was, supposed to be a prophet to prophets. And he's sitting in his own house with nobody to teach. And there he is alone. But you know, when you know you've done what God wants you to do, it don't matter if they all leave you. Brother Copeland said one time, the Lord asked him, he said, what would you do if all your partners quit? He said he walked out on the tarmac of the airport out there at KCM. He said, what would happen if all your partners quit? Brother Copeland looked around, he said, nothing. He said, correct. You know anything. You just... He said, then what would you do? He said, I'd go preach. He said, correct. Quit worrying about it. It has nothing to do with you. So now, here's Elisha with nobody to teach. And that same king, Ben-Hadad, that sent Naaman, his captain of the guard, to get that healing. Now Ben-Hadad gets sick. And he inquired of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Will I recover of this disease? The word of the Lord came to the prophet, told him he would recover, and told him by which method he would recover and so forth. Then the king loaded up 40 camel loads. Do you know how much a, a camel was? The, it was a modern-day pickup truck of its day. And they, they had half-ton camels and ton-and-a-half camels and two-and-a-half-ton truck camels. But either way, they, you could, they'd get down, a camel drops down on his knees like this, gets down, and then they load him up and strap it all down. Then he starts getting up, and he pushes that load up, and then they hook them together. And that's how the, the train of camels came. He sent 40 camel loads to Elisha. Now he's sitting there with nobody to teach and 40 camel loads of provision. I think you can leave too soon, but that's all right. Could all the prophets come flooding back now that he was healthy? I hadn't read that far. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is, Brother Hagin used to tell us, now when you're in the ministry, you know how Brother Hagin used to, if you, those of you remember Brother Hagin, let me see your hand. He'd walk like this. And he'd, these thumbs would do this like that. He'd walk and he'd talk like this. You know. I'm going to tell you what the Lord then told me. He'd do. He, he said one time, he said, now those of you that are called to full-time ministry, you know you can't do nothing else. I mean, you're the Lord's bondservant. You might not get paid every Saturday night. He won't settle up with you every Saturday night. 
but he does settle up. That's what he told us. Say it. The Lord may not settle up with me Saturday night. The Lord may not settle up with me Saturday night. But he'll settle up. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with abundance. There's, in fact, God is the God of abundance. In fact, he's got one gate leads to the holy city that is 1,500 miles tall. Made of a single pearl. Can you imagine the size of the oyster that produced the pearl? A single pearl. He is not wasteful. He is extravagant. And we tend to think if we've got a bunch, we can be wasteful with it. We tend to be more wasteful when we have abundance. But if you'll treat abundance like you do, like you treat having just a little, there will always be an abundance. Because you'll find out that you're not going to frivolously spend things just because you think that it'll always be there. Learn, how, learn that about, about prosperity is that while it's there, you take care of it. We talk about the common pitfalls to avoid. Pride, arrogance, self-sufficiency, competitiveness. Deciding now to no, never inquire of God, no inquiry of God because you got everything. Why would you need him? One of the pitfalls is loftiness and imperialistic thinking, elitism, and so forth. And um, Proverbs 18.23 said, The poor uses humble requests, but the rich answer roughly. <clears throat> I remember years ago I was uh, in the wallpaper business. I was called out. Uh, this uh, lady was an um, interior designer, and she was somewhere off up near Kennesaw Due West Road, somewhere up there. I I didn't know how to get to the house and we, before the days of GPS. And she said, showed me how to get to this one crossing. She said, if you can meet me, there's a church there at, this, at the corner. And if you meet me there, I can tell you from there how to get to the house to do the, the job. And uh, so I drove to that church and parked and waited on her. And when she pulled up, she pulled up right between me and the church sign and the church sign had that proverb written on the marquee board. It said, the rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them both. And I said to her, I said, look at that. We've met here in this church parking lot together. And look what the sign says. The rich and the poor meet together. And she said, well, I know which one of them I am. I said, well, I, if you're taking it, I'm, I'm calling shotgun. I'm the rich one. <laughs> Decide you're not going to get abundance and start answering roughly to people and being short with people and being distant with people because you don't have to be a sweet, good Christian, kind-hearted, easy-to-entreat personality should be in you whether you have little or whether you have a lot. Paul said this, I, have, I am instructed both to be hungry and to have abundance, both, both to suffer need and have, all the, have, have, have more than sufficiency. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm instructed with nothing. I'm instructed with a bunch. I can receive his instruction no matter what. So we talked about these things. Then we've also talked about, we had Bible business. Remember when we talked about uh, the business of God, how that uh, men that are, if you want to be, if you want to have profit, go into a business. Ask the Lord to show you what you're... You live in America. Thank God. It's the best place for business. In fact, we have a president that's just dropped your corporate taxes down 14%. It's made it very uh, attractive to bring your business here. And um, so we talked about the where First Thessalonians said uh, to study to be quiet, do your own business, work with your own hands. It produces honesty and abundance and without lack and... Uh, Then we talked about the commodity of our kingdom and how that, that commodity is faith, 
Scripture says the just shall live by faith. You're going to run your business by faith. You're going to handle your marriage by faith. You're going to raise your kids by faith, aren't you? Has anybody been old enough now to exit faith, or you need more faith now than you've ever had? Okay. Luke 16, 16 says the law was until John, but now the kingdom of God is preached. And, and this prosperity is going to come out of the kingdom that's within you, flow out of your mouth. Faith is the commodity of God's kingdom. We remember when we talked about those things, yes? Okay. He said, fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the whole kingdom. He, does, he's, he didn't buy it. He didn't put it together and keep it for himself. He gave it to you. It's yours. It's mine. Then we talked about the pitfalls of prosperity continued in February the 4th called the masquerading ill motivator. And we talked about how that... Uh, Contentedness is a state of peaceful happiness, satisfied with certain levels of achievement or lot in life and not wishing for more or accepting as adequate despite wanting more or better, a state of satisfaction, being relaxed, and there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, the Bible says in whatever state you find yourself in, be there with content. The opposite of that is covetousness, and covetousness is a masquerading ill motivator. It'll tell you that without... Having that drive in you, you're never going to be anything. But in reality, that covetousness can cause you to go broke real quick. And uh, covetousness being the distraction from the will of God. And contentedness will keep you focused and attentive on God's plan for your life. And, and that we'll, in every stage of our life and season, whatever, will just be a pure joy as long as there's contentedness in you. If you're content with little, God can trust us with much. Amen. All right. I have observed, I said, that prosperity runs from the covetousness while contentedness tends to attract prosperity. We talked about provision in season or out. And we talked about how the, the uh, this was, I believe it was last week, we talked about how the, the uh, Israelites wanted flesh, wanted flesh, we want flesh, we want flesh. So finally, Moses, God told Moses, take the 70 men that you know to be elders, bring them together. I'll take a, of the spirit on you and put it on those 70 men and you'll, they'll help you take care of everybody. Well, when he pulled a piece of that, pros, that prosperity and that anointing off of Moses and put on those 70 men, the scripture said they prophesied and did not cease. And then he caused a wind to come from the Lord and quails blew in and landed in the camp three feet high, a day's journey in every direction. Can you imagine? How far can you walk in a day? I've never tried it. I could go several. You average average man on four on on foot is, can walk about about four miles an hour. Okay, so you, if you're on the hump, you're about twenty miles an hour. You're on twenty miles in a day. All right, so you figure. Can you imagine forty miles of quail three feet high on the ground, and they ate it until he said you're going to eat it for a whole month you know quail it was like any other bird that when it dies it's going to start rottening and so we talked about that last week they got they all died of salmonella poison and you can have you can want something that in abundance that once you get it it's it's you can't take care of it but notice how the prosperity came it came as a result of what they prophesied out their mouths oftentimes and this has been perilous for me in, in, in 24 years of pastoring this church. I have been the only voice that prophesied in anything in this church. And that was my responsibility. I knew, I knew coming in that was, that was my, my call. Prophesy in a building. Prophesy in provision. Prophesy in the chairs you're sitting in. Prophesy in the, the bills paid every month. Prophesy in your prosperity. Brother Copeland said it to me clearly in my face. Got in my face. I thought his nose was going to bump into my face when he said, the prosperity of your people will come out of your mouth, Pastor. So I've realized that, in fact, your wife's downstairs. But she, she's more of a talker than you are. I sent them a video, a, 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 an email one time. and said, how can you tell the sex of a bird? So I scrolled down, I scrolled it up, and there was just one bird sitting there like that, and the other bird going. <laughs> so I sent it to Lynn and Harold. <laughs> 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 
They were talking about one day seeing a piece of property near my second home that I have in North Georgia. That's where they're from, or her, her folks are kind of from that, that area. And I bought that place that I have back in 06, and it's just been a blessing to have and enjoyed it. And uh, Y'all had gone and looked for property there in different places and never been able to find one. And finally you found that place that was on water, it was on a hill looking down on the water. But the thought of getting the money to buy that place is just was beyond over the, just, it was an impossibility. So one day we're talking in your house. And I, have you ever talked and you just can't seem to, a subject starts coming up out of you, you can't seem to shut up about it, you just keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, and talking about it and you just can't, you can't see, you, you, it's called running off at the mouth. I just started talking like this. You need to go, go check this out. Go check that out. At least call the man. At least find out because you never know. Because right now here's 60 years old is coming. And your retirement years is coming. And you, one day you don't want to look back and think that maybe uh, that I wish I'd done that when I could have done that. Has anybody ever looked at a piece of property that you wish you bought, you didn't buy it, and now you don't have it, and now you wish you'd bought it? You ever done that? I, see, I don't want to do that. I don't want to look back at my life. And I was just talking, 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 talking. And I said, so call Jay. Jay knows finances. So you call Jay. And what did Jay say? He said, use your 401k so he had money that he was able to borrow from himself, pay cash for the property, and over the next five years, about two hours of overtime will cover that payment, and it's painless. He don't even know he's making the payment. They're making it for him, and every time they put money back in the bank, the company doubles the amount, and he pays interest on the loan to himself and not the, insur not, not the finance company. And he said, do it before you retire. For the tape, those of you that are listening to this, he said he, he, he said, he kept hearing from the Lord say, do it before you retire because you kept thinking, I'll do this when I retire. No, but see, he's preparing you in advance. See how he advance, prepares us for our prosperity? See? Now he's got this beautiful lake property, and one day there'll be a little place to live on it, and one day it's a second home. It could even be the second home or be the primary residence one day. But... Isn't it interesting how the prosperity came out of my mouth, just like Brother Copeland said? See? Before we talked. Okay. See, the law of recognition states that you have something in your house that you're not thinking will profit you. The law of recognition says recognize what you have. That, that widow woman came to Elijah one time and said that your servant, your prophet, le is dead and has left me. I'm the widow and I've got these two sons and now the creditors come to take my two sons to be bondmen. And man, that prophet was just real considerate of her and sweet. And then no, that's, that's the other story. The, he, uh, he, he was just, you would have thought, he'd have said, come here, darling, let's pray over you. Let's pray and let's believe God and find out some way to keep your boys from being taken as bond servants. He didn't say that. He, he looked at that widow woman and said, what am I going to do for you? Well, I got something. What do you got in your house? I promise you, your servant has nothing but a pot of oil. He said, go borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. That's why it's so important to obey the prophet that God's got in your life. Lynn's testimony that next day after y'all got closed the property, she said, I just couldn't make myself pick up the phone and see about this. Just, that's a $25,000 decision. I just, 
You know how heavy that telephone can be when you're going to go make a heavy decision like that? Am I doing the right thing? All she had was Pastor John's encouragement and knew that y'all had a magnetism over there. So she called. They talked to Jay, got online and saw that you could two clicks and the $25,000 could be transferred and you'd have the property bought. And one thing you know about property, it seldom ever goes down in value. And lakefront property never goes down in value. Now, <clears throat> there are pitfalls to prosperity. And we talked about provision in and out of season. And we talked about how that once in hand, the subject of the provision, once in hand is a subject to a myriad of perilous predators, and so also is its owner. So have it where it belongs. Your prosperity was over there hidden for you, held for you in, in, uh, in an account, and God allowed you to use it, and you can pay it back. Instead of borrowing from the bank, you borrowed from you, and you're paying yourself interest, and the company's matching the, the payment back. Y'all, that's win, 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 isn't it? I want to talk to you today in the remaining time that we have. We'll run through some things real quick called the unexpected pitfall. And this may end this series right here. I'm not sure, but I think it will. Turn to Mark chapter 10 and, and let's take a look at what the Lord has to say to us today concerning the unexpected pitfall of prosperity. Understand, this series of teachings is not designed to make you think that prosperity is wrong. This rather is a teaching to help you see prosperity for God's way of seeing it and make us be able to step properly and not fall into the pitfalls that are associated with it. Mark chapter 10. Verse. Well, Jesus is talking about riches here. He's talking about financial riches in verse 23 when Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished beyond words. But Jesus answered again and said, said to him, them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? It's not the riches that they have. It's their trust in them. It's the attitude toward them. How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? Sounds to me like they only knew rich people. Sounds to me like they were only, that's all they knew. Jesus looking upon them and said, with men it's impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Didn't we sing that this morning? Did y'all sing that? <laughs> Interesting. Then Peter began to say to him, lo, we've left all and followed you. Jesus answered and said, verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel's but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come, eternal life. He said he'll receive a hundredfold now in this time. Now in this time. Say, I live in this time right now. And he, he said he didn't, he didn't say you had to necessarily physically leave it all. He said, but if you put every priority aside and put his priority first. The kingdom of God first. And leave everything else. Make it. Didn't Lance exhort this a little bit to us? Isn't that what you said? Interesting how all this is flowing together. We're hitting the same message out of multiple witnesses this morning. If you put all that aside, leave that, put that last. Put my kingdom first in the Gospels. Then I'll give you all these things. Remember when God came to Solomon in a dream right after he, he was 20 years old and he was about to take the, the throne of Israel. And he said, what will I do for you? Ask, let me, and anything you ask, I'll give it to you. He said, oh Lord, he said, this, this, how can I oversee these, this great people? How can I have the, give me the wisdom necessary to oversee such great a people the number of which is greater than the grains of sand on the seashore. Give me wisdom that I might go in and out among them and be a king and take care of these people. 
And God said to him, Because you've asked this thing, and not asked for the lives of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, nor have you asked for riches and honor, Therefore, riches and honor is given to you with the wisdom. See, it wasn't, God didn't want him to have the riches or the honor. He wanted him to put wisdom first for his people. Always put his people first and his kingdom first because that's all God's consuming thoughts are, his people. It's his thoughts. Day. Did you know the Bible says that his thoughts toward you in a single day outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore? That's the number of thoughts that he has toward you in a day. My goodness. And if you go to thinking like he thinks, man, there's, there, all of this is just byproduct. He'll pour all of that on you. Now, but notice here the unexpected pitfall. All these things will come on you with persecutions. Jesus said it would. So the word persecute means to oppress for holding to a belief or an opinion. To oppress, to harass, or maltreat. To persecute someone is to bother them persistently. To persecute someone. Anybody had a persecutor in your life bother you persistently? To afflict, to torture, or to torment. To worry, to badger, to vex, to pester. <laughs> I think we've all experienced it to, to, to an extent. Typically, what Jesus is talking about here is religious persecution, which includes a tail-bearing campaign. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23. Put that up on the board. Let me show you what this is. Witchcraft, we think of witchcraft as this a woman in a black flowing suit with red up under the bottom of it. She's got this big pot of potion that, that, boil, that is boiling and that, and that looks like you got dry ice and water and it's the, fl- the, the, the <laughs> fog is coming out of it and she's stirring it and she's a witch because she's doing witch whatever. She's got a broom and uh, she flies on a broom and she says, surrender Dorothy and writes it in the sky. That's what you think of a witch doing witchcraft. No. 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 He said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as, is as iniquity and idolatry. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 20 calls witchcraft a work of the flesh. And this is what typically persecution brings. It is a work of the flesh that comes right alongside with prosperity. Be prepared for the unexpected pitfall. You're going to find out when you start prospering in ways you've never prospered in your life that there's going to be people that just aren't as thrilled about it as you are. And, th- and I'll tell you this, it's going to be true then as it is today. People are not our enemy. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It is not them. Some of them are kin to you. Some of them have the same DNA that you have. And they are not your enemy. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's the Spirit that drives them. He said, um, among the, the, the works of the flesh are these. He said in verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Listen, what I'm talking to you about today is the works of the flesh that will come as a result. Now, what is the fuel of the persecution? What's fueling it? You said jealousy. What did you say? That's what I'm looking for right there. Envy is the fuel of the campaign. The excuse is always something else. Turn to Matthew chapter 27, verse 18. I won't go into this detailed, but I'm just, you, I'm, you, you've been warned. Because the prosperity is coming. With it comes the persecution. Can you say clearly, we, you and I have prospered beyond our effort, our brains, a lot above my brain. <laughs> In spite of us. And I got a neighbor, God love his heart, that has watched me prosper since 03. 
Now he's got a big camper. Pulls up with a $60,000 truck. It's a $40,000 camper. $100,000 going down the road. All of it needing insured. Beautiful thing. Walk in it. It looks like a five-star hotel inside. It's gorgeous. I thought it was... When he backed that thing in, I thought, man, this is so wonderful to get something. If you like that sort of thing, if you, I mean, if you like a camper, I personally don't want the maintenance that goes with one. But there are people that love him, and he's, he'll wash that thing. I'll watch him. He'll shine them wheels. It looks good. And I've got a lot of, about him that's very, and I, I genuinely am honored for him, thrilled for him. A few years ago, I heard he told somebody that I, was materialistic. He did. Word always gets back to you. You know how? A bird of the air will fly and tell you. Well, when I heard that he said that about somebody else too, basically, you know, things are important to him. And I understand that. Things are important to all of us. Yeah, he's got too many of those classic cars over there. And he just pastures a little old bitty church. There's some money flowing there. You know, Gladys Kravitz. Edna! What's going on over there? They got another car. Ah, <laughs> oh, leave it alone, Gladys. Remember? That was on Bewitched. That was a... That was a uh, notice that it was on Bewitched. Bewitched. You know what witchcraft is? It is a campaign of tail bearing. That's all it is. It's not a... Sp- Spiritual thing. It is the effects of a person's heart that's being affected by the words of another person's mouth. And it comes as a result of prosperity. Get prepared. It's coming. You know who? Do you know? Where did I leave it off? Oh, too many classic cars over there. He got that cabin up there. I ain't even seen that. I'll. Talking all this ugly stuff about me. And, um, oh, yeah, the person that was quoting him had, he said he was wearing Rolex. <laughs> all I want to know is would Jesus wear a Rolex on his television show? <laughs> Remember when Ray Stevens wrote that song? You listen to me. I'm preparing you in advance because God knows how to prosper us beyond our brain. Get prepared for prosperity coming to you. Listen to me, elder statesman. There is a portfolio that you will leave after you've enjoyed it for years. Prosperity coming out of my mouth for you. Ask him, he'll tell you. Ask her. You listen to me. One of the most well-known singers of the 70s was a girl by the name of Stevie Nicks. I thought she had the greatest, most raspy, most wonderful, I almost said what I really thought, wonderful voice. She was a practicing witch. Yeah. You know what the name of their wildly successful album was called? Rumors. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. If I can subjugate you, if I can twist your thinking by the words of my mouth, you'll do things because of what I said to you. And if, especially if I tell you about him and you'll think differently because words affect you. you. And you'll try not to believe them, but you'll believe them anyway because the words were so powerful. They had fangs and it fills you full of venom about him. And they'll leave and, and there you are poisoned. See, gossip or gospel, they're both very much alike. Gospel or gossip, these are synonymous methods with which opposite messages are spoken. You can herald the gospel for the benefit and blessing of a person, or you can herald gossip for the destruction and the curse of a person. Either way, the message gets something done. And I've had people... Over the years, I've had people, you know, when you pastor a church, it's a lot like having a bunch of people standing up like pins on a bowling alley. They're just standing there all 
congregated ready to listen and somebody rolls a bowling ball and knocks them right down and you wonder what in the name of God happened. But they, they're just standing there sitting ducks. <laughs> busted. It's happened for years. So what do you do? You just keep on preaching the gospel to whatever pen happens to stand up <laughs> and try to get rid of the bowling balls when they show up. I've so got to tell this story. I cannot believe I'm about to tell this story. Yeah, I'm going to tell this story. One time, speaking of bowling, well, the bowling alley, my grandson Jack was just a little boy, and I had just put on Rusty Dunn here, so this was in 2010. So how old would Jack have been? About five, six years old? And we all went to the bowling alley, all of us, the kids, the grandkids, all everybody, we all went to, to the, on a Wednesday night fellowship. And I, I rolled a strike. And the next one, I rolled, and it was a strike. And the bowling ball I had was the, the finger holes were real narrow. I thought, man, I might be able to really, I might have it tonight if I can get a bowling ball that's, that's, uh, that my fingers are just right in. So I was over there, feeling, and you can't hear, every, bowling balls are crashing, and music's playing, and, and I'm feeling around trying to get, get the right feel on a bowling ball, and I felt this, Papa John, Papa John, Papa John, yelling. I said, what, baby? It was Jack. He said, Papa John, I know why you're always winning. Because he was impressed with those two strikes. I know why you're always winning. I said, How, why, baby? He said, because you have very heavy balls. <laughs> That's what he said. And I said, you need to go over there and tell Rusty Dunn that right there. <laughs> tell him. Go tell him. So he went over there to tell Rusty Dunn. And he was listening to him. And I grabbed two of the bowling balls. like this. When he, And when Rusty went, what? He looked at me and I held both those bone balls up just like that. <laughs> just so I'd tell you. It's called prosperity. <laughs> I just had to tell you what happened with us one day. Jesus was taken to the cross. Did you put Matthew 27, 18 up? What delivered him to the cross? It wasn't nobody out there, nobody in the Sanhedrin, nobody among the Pharisees, nobody among the Sadducees, nobody among the scribes, no one ever told the real reason why they were mad at him and said, give us Barabbas. Get rid of this fellow. He's blaspheming God. Crucify him. They never told the truth, not one time. In reality, what they should have said, we are envious of this man. He has caused the whole world to come after him and he's going to take over the financial markets. He'll be the only one anybody's going to want to go to church with if he stays. We've got to kill him to protect and preserve our standing in the community. They should have said it's our envy of him. But you can't tell the truth when it, the truth is really the real deal. Say two things, Pastor John. Thanks, the, excuse the excuse and the real reason. And, the real reason. and there are going to be people around you when you prosper that are not going to be happy about it. And they're going to have an excuse for why they are persecuting you. And that Jesus said this, get prepared. He said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. He said, he said the disciple's not above his master. You're going to have the same thing that I have. Just get prepared for it. And they'll, he, Jesus said, they're going to they're gonna come a day. Ooh, I want to say that in tongues. Mm. There's going to come a day when they're going to think that they're doing God a service if they kill you. Remember when they offered to, they said they sought to slay him because he broke the Sabbath. So they're going to break a commandment because he broke a commandment. <laughs> break the commandment of murder because he broke the commandment of the Sabbath. But Jesus was the, he was the mediator between the two covenants saying that the, now the Sabbath is no longer what it was. I am the Sabbath. I am. Your rest has come. See? He knew. Remember when I asked the Bible college what spirit delivered Jesus to the cross? It was envy. Guess what? Children of the Most High God, they'll envy you just like they envied Him. 
Remember the first, the Bible, the subject of the, the, the Bible interpretive rule of first mention says the first word mentioned, it'll always carry that same mention throughout every, every same meaning. If, even, even if it adds something else to it, it'll always include the meaning of the first mention. Every time you see the word glory, let me tell you how prosperous you can expect to become. Jesus said, consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil. They don't work. But Solomon in all of his glory, all of his wealth, was not arrayed like one of these. And he said this, a greater than Solomon is here. Guess who the greater than Solomon is? All of you. You're in him. The great, can you, or can you, can you, can you ask yourself this question. Can I handle this prosperity that's coming? Can I walk in it? Can I be honorable with it? Can I be glorious with it? Can I be humble? Can I remain truly humble? They say the post-lottery winner mentality is different than the pre-lottery winner mentality. Take about all about three days for the... drunkenness and the shock to get over and suddenly begin to realize you can buy anything, go anywhere, do anything, and suddenly now things are not necessarily as important as they used to be. Responsibilities. Multiple divorces take place after lottery winnings. Children are left abandoned after lottery winnings. People whose responsibilities they would never have left have now leave those responsibilities because they don't need to anymore. They're their great wealth. They've got quail three feet tall in every direction. Now it's fixing to rot all the way around them and it's going to poison them if they're not real careful. Can you handle the great prosperity that is coming? Can you say it? Pastor, can I? Say it. Pastor, can I? Yes, I can, I can handle it. All of the above comes as a result of prosperity. Can you handle the persecution that would come from somebody that you love, somebody you go to church with, somebody that's kin to you, somebody that's real close to you, that suddenly now no longer... Uh, that, that Jesus said, He said, Blessed are you when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, because so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. I heard a scripture. i got to remember it. You got to be thick skinned when people will say, what's the first thing that happens when somebody says something about you, you know it's not true. What's the first thing you think to do? Go set the record straight and, 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 and defend yourself. You put it on Facebook. Oh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Facebook, is the, Facebook, Facebook is the cyberspace pulpit for everybody. I know some of the most goofy epithets I've ever heard in my life have been written on Facebook. God love them. I got on Facebook one night some years ago, and this family that used to go to church had a long feed of arguing back and forth, arguing about the son, arguing about mama, arguing about the dad, arguing about the nephew. I was read all this trash. I was at 2 o'clock in the morning. I thought, I just woke up and came in here and sat down because I couldn't sleep. Obviously, they can't either. I couldn't resist. Comment. Hush. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. But, Pastor, you got to understand, he was doing so and so. And so and I said, hush. Go to bed. And I clicked over to another gateway Bible and I found that scripture that says it is vain for you to rise up early and sit up late and eat the bread of sorrows. He gives his beloved sleep. I copied and pasted that and put it on there. Go to sleep. They finally hushed. 
This is a family had fought each other and fought each other and fought each other and fought each other, and they were in a fight when one of them shot and killed himself. Now, you tell me, is strife worth it? What is present when strife is present? Every evil work. It's not to be meddled with. This is a strife-free zone. You are a strife-free people. Your homes are homes of peace and prosperity and blessing. It's the womb of the Holy Ghost is in your home. And you'll be able to think clearly. There'll be no confusion where there's no strife. Then you'll be able to think clearly about how to handle your prosperity when it comes. Let me tell you about the thick skin you really need to have when people say ugly things about you and and go to your church members and talk ugly about you. And, And especially if you're a pastor. Somebody told me one time that Joel Osteen shouldn't have a $1.4 million house. That's extravagance gone to seed. $1.4 $1.4 million house. No, no pastor needs a $1.4 million gift. So $1.4 million. It almost sound like $1.4 million. like sound like a cuss word. $1.4 million. <laughs> now I got thinking, he had 40,000 people in his church last week. I had 70. Hmm. My house is 140,000. I'm one-tenth of Joel's house. <laughs> Why ain't I got one-tenth of his people? <laughs> he had 40,000. I ought to have 4,000. If you compared his ministry to his house, I should be living in my mailbox. I'm the one that's extravagant, not him. I'm the one that's extravagant. We have a neighbor across the street. They got two dogs. They're pit bulls. This is another neighbor, another neighbor. I like these, these folks. I like the other guy, too. We just don't have no fellowship. I wish I did, but I don't. I'm too busy with y'all. I ain't worry about somebody else. What does the Bible say to, to do to them that curse you? Bless. What does he say to do to them that persecute you? Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. Be sweet. He said, he said be kind to the unthankful and kind to the unholy. Because you'll be like you, you'll be children of your father. Because he's kind to the unthankful and kind to the unholy. He causes his son to rise on the just. And his son rises on the unjust. And he sends his life-giving rain both on the, the just and on the unjust and on the evil and on the good. He's just good. God's just good. That's who we are. Just good because he's good. Be the children of your father. Well, at least this couple across the street, they got, they got a couple dogs and they're both pit bulls and and they had a fence put in their backyard. And I've been watching old boy prosper for years. The best prosperity he's ever had in his life. And, and uh, he just recently, recently put in a swim pool in his backyard. And I texted him. I said, you just live in the dream. That's what I told him, aren't you? And he said, yes, I am. And I'm thankful. He just, that phone just lit up. And I just watched those guys work that front end loader and put that swimming pool in. And he had two dogs. One's a male and one's a female. And the female's name is Chloe. And the male's name is Parker because he met him in a park, grabbed him up and brought him home. So Chloe and Parker got their buddies. Well, Parker could climb that fence like a squirrel and get out. And Chloe could too, but she didn't. She, every time they'd yell Parker, she'd look and see that she realized that it was wrong for him to jump out of the fence. And she jumped about one or two more times and realized this is not the thing to do. And she was quickly obedient. But Parker, no, gone, scale the fence. And he was doing everything he could to keep that dog in. So he bought this, this thing you buy. So you put a collar on the dog. It, it, it gives him a, a taser and shock collar. And you got three settings. You got vibrate, where all it does is vibrate. Don't shock them. Then number one is a light shock. And number three will light their fire. And so Chloe got real close to the fence and they hit vibrate on her. She hollered, ran up and jumped up in her mama's lap. She cried. She cried. I watched it. She just got vibrated. Didn't get shocked. Broke her heart. Laid in her mama's lap. Parker. Sonny hit that fence and they lit him up on number three. And that dog said, Yeah! 
just ran on through it. <laughs> Son, doing what he's doing. Every time they, they try, eventually going to train him. <laughs> he can't go ahead. He didn't even look back. It just hurt, but he'd go on. Pastor, why are you telling us, tell us this? Because one day you're going to have some prosperity and some persecution is going to hit you. It's going to vibrate you a little bit. It's going to break your heart. And you're going to want to come to Pastor John. Oh, they said ugly things to me. <laughs> but I, I, I didn't want them to hate me just because I got that inheritance. <laughs> Or you may get some real great thing hit you real hard. Somebody's going to really nail you and take you to court because they're so jealous of it. And you're going to have to be able to go, yeah! right get on through it. So you're going to have a thick skin or a thin one. Which one are you going to have? There's an analogy in everything. Thank you for joining us today for the WordWise Christian broadcast. Remember, God sent us his written word to get our thinking straightened out. When his mindset becomes our own, peace is always the result. We grow a thick skin. We handle prosperity and the persecution that comes as a result. Our believing confession gets straightened out because we've become word wise. God bless you. See you next week. <laughs> yeah. Everybody say it with me. Thick skin. Say it, Jesus. Lord over my life, grab a microphone and, and uh, give it to Dean and tell him to pray us out here. Dean, if you'll close in, in prayer, we'll say amen to what you say. Father in heaven, we thank you for the word that was given to us, knowing full well that we are going to suffer for anything that really, really involves it's what you. what you're doing. Yes. Lord, we pray for those who would attack us and those who would <laughs> say those things that are ugly and mean that we will not have a heart that is evil in trying to get even somehow <laughs> or even despising ourselves for what we fail to do. Keep us right with your spirit and bless each one in this place <laughs> that your Holy Amen. Spirit might go with us and we might be pleased to live for you. Amen. Y'all are dismissed. <laughs> <laughs>